Hi, this is Joe, KF7MIX, here with a video four of the training series for JS8 Spotter, a companion program for JS8 Call. In this uh, short video, hopefully short, I'm going to cover the offline map feature that's built into JS8 Spotter. This is a really basic feature. Um, you th I, I know a lot of people see maps and they get excited that this modern idea of Google Maps is going to give them the entire world at their fingertips. This is really not that. This is just designed to give a very basic offline map. Um, so in this video, we're just gonna, I'm gonna remind you of the scope of this whole series of videos and the gap in JS8 call that we're trying to fill. So the scope of these training videos is simply to show you how JS8 Spotter works. This is not JS8 call training or anything else. Uh, the scope of this video in particular is to just look at the map feature. If you wanna know more about what this series is about, go ahead and watch the video one, which is the introduction. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the map feature. I've got a JS8 call running and JS8 spotter running. Let's talk about uh, how grid coordinates are gathered in JS8 call or from JS8 call. Um, the restraints on the map, uh, the, the self-imposed restraints, I will say. Um, the map and grid list functionality and the database behind it. All right, first of all, in JS8 call, uh, you're going to see grid coordinates flying around frequently. You're going to see them when somebody sends out a heartbeat request. Let's see if there's any. The band is never busy when I'm making videos, but okay, here's one right here. W6OEM. Heartbeat request EM25. So he sent the grid with that request. All right. You're going to see grids also when someone's calling CQ and, and with a few other transmissions. So the grid is something that's it's out there um, and it's something worth gathering. So let's take a look at the map. Under the Tools menu in JS8 Spotter, if you click on Map, it's going to bring up the offline map. Now, the moment you click that, your hopes and dreams of this being Google Maps are going to be dashed to pieces. This is a very basic static map. Uh, right now, I only have maps for North America and Europe. I could certainly do more if there was some sort of a need that someone expressed. But that, that's it right now. This is the map. Uh, you're, there's no zoom or pan or anything else. This is just a basic grid map. Um, the reason for that, that constraint I, I put in here myself was, well, A, I don't have tons of time to program. This is a hobby. Um, I'm not the best programmer in the world. This is just something I'm doing for fun for ham radio. Um, the second reason is, is that I want JS8 Spotter to work on low powered systems. Well, at least as low powered as JS8 Call will allow. Uh, so I didn't want to build something that was real heavy and real big that took a lot of disk space this barely has any footprint at all. Uh, you can use it almost anywhere. Um, so that, and I wanted to work in Linux and Windows, and I didn't want to have to add a bunch of libraries uh, to my program that would just add bloat. So that, those are my reasons. I know that there is value in a Google Maps type zoomable map and everything else. I, I get that. This is, that's just not what you're getting here. Um, so let me explain what you do get, because you do get something. We don't want to sell it too short. What you're going to get is the ability to track it's going to automatically, J8 Spotter automatically keeps track of any sort of grid location that comes through the API. Um, and it saves that in a database table that we'll look at in a little bit later in this video. And then it'll display, right now you see the top ones, the first 25 are highlighted. You can show the latest 10 contacts all the way up to the latest 100 contacts on the map. Okay, I, I tend to keep it at 25 because it's somewhat manageable. Um, what you get here is the ability to double click on these. You can also, you're going, in JS8 Call, if you have any experience with it, you're going to get, you know you'll get spurious transmissions that are decoded. See, that's down at negative 28. Uh, if you see one of those, you can just uh, either right-click or hit the delete key and just remove it from the list. Or leave it there if you don't care. It's up to you. But this gives you, what this gives you is a quick picture of who you're receiving information about or from. Um, really useful to kind of understand propagation, maybe give you a quick picture of who you may be able to contact. This is not a guarantee. These aren't the stations that are hearing you. Remember, this is what you're intercepting. So, but this does give you an basically time of day sort of impression of what you might be able to do on the band that you're using. So that's, that's the value of the map in my opinion. And let me just uh, make sure we're covering everything. This is not a, shouldn't be a long video because it's pretty simple. Uh, the constraints or restraints we talked about, how the grids are gathered. Uh, I think we covered the functionality just by poking at it. Um, 
we got the map here it, it automatically shows you like I showed you the uh, I mean you can look at Europe or North America you can get the latest 10 and you'll see that drops these symbols down um, you, the only other constraint I'll tell you is that I'm not calculating anything but this four letter grid so it's it's just finding the center of that four letter grid more or less it's using math to find it on this map it's not fancy but it gives you a general idea of where the operators from and uh, where you are we could do a lot more with this maybe in the future it could show you the distance between you and the operator uh, using some math as well but for now it, it's just give you a general propagation idea and uh, that's about all that you need to know about about the maps in in there so let's just take a look at the database real quick before we go just so you're aware the database is in an SQLite format you're more than welcome to open it up in an editor program such as this one programs are available for Linux or Windows graphical programs like this uh, you can interact with that data however you want so let's uh, let's take a look here's the format you'd call sign grid dial type you if you know about databases you're gonna notice there's no ID field and that this is a primary um, unique field so we're our table is based on the call sign so if we get more than one grid report for a call sign it's gonna replace whatever's in there so you'll never have two rows with one call sign uh, let's browse that data real quick and you'll see again this now in this table it's never deleting anything unless you manually delete it um, back when I was first starting I, some of these I just didn't delete now this is never gonna get that full because it's based on unique call signs apart from these garbage ones that come in you're gonna have some sort of fixed limit of call signs that you're ever gonna receive on on JS8 call if that bothers you you know this is not a big database table it's just not and probably never will be but if it bothers you you can use a program like this to clean it up to delete things reset it however you want to do it uh, there's tools included Python tools with uh, JS8 spotter that you know you can start your database over as well but uh, that's what the database looks like you've got the you know the band that they were spotted on and uh, the signal report as well as when you last saw them most recently so if you again this is the a training video for in a series of training videos for JS8 spotter so if you have more questions feel absolutely free to contact me Joe KF7MIX my information is on qrz.com um, or leave a comment if you have questions you can put, put it in the comments if you want or if you have additional insights or information be glad to hear it thanks